All right, my friends. Today we will open this Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. This is the latest and greatest device from the corporation of Evil itself. And the box looks... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it is the cheapest looking package of all times among all the smartphones. I don't even know who is worse. Google? Sony Xperia? Samsung? Who will win the award of the most poor, disrespectful and cheap looking package of all times? I feel like they need to split this award among all of them. Because they all look like trash. When I spent more than $1300 for the device with 256 gigs only, I feel like I deserve some respect. But judging by this box, I feel like we won't get any cables, any chargers. Alright, enough talk, let's open this box. This box even smells weird. I really hate this trend of being green. They are talking too much about carbon footprint, how all this should get our device to be cheaper, but this is $1300, 256 gigs. What is going on? Oh. Alright. <laughs> it instantly gets some points in their karma. Because these Japanese guys do not even put this damn cable in their box. Sony, get your stuff together. Some paper. The tool for SIM card tray. Alright. Looking good. I love the feeling in the hands. Personally, I hate flat sides. Because, for example, this is iPhone, it has these very rough edges, not very comfortable handling experience, but here they are somewhat round, they do not pierce in your hand. I kinda like this. Let's move these shenanigans out of the way. Unboxing experience is kinda basic and even atrocious if we consider the price of this device. This new camera bump design. This is iPhone Pro, not Max, and this is Google Pixel XL. You can see the size difference. To tell the truth, they look almost identical. Their design and feeling is the same. Maybe Google Pixel is more comfortable to hold because of slightly round edges on its flat surface, but the general idea is the same. Personally, I enjoy round edges and waterfall screen a lot more. It is a lot more comfortable for my hand rather than these flat edges. But this one, Google Pixel 9, is a lot better, for example, than iPhone or Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. So I kinda like it. Let's turn it on. Power button is on top. Welcome to your pixel. Skip. Skip. Setup offline. Continue. Next. Send usage and diagnostic data. No. Alright. Here we have it. Tons of Google's bloatware. <laughs> no surprise. This is Google's phone. Alright, let's set everything up. Look at the settings, look at the camera application to understand what Google OS can give us in terms of features. If you have any specific suggestions or requests for these future videos, for the full review of these smartphones, please make a comment, tell what you want to see, maybe we can implement something if it is possible. Feel free to tell this down below, you are welcome. And of course, we will compare this latest Google Pixel 9 Pro XL against Huawei Pure 70 Ultra 
and against another Huawei brand, Honor Magic 6 Ultimate Edition. Next, there will be a lot more in-depth comparisons, such as lots and lots of photo and video examples in different situations. So stay tuned, my friends, hope to see you in the next videos. This device is very pleasant for the touch and has very good oleophobic surface on the screen, but I suggest you to use protective film or glass, because this oleophobic screen will scratch literally from thin air. And also I immediately bought this protection case. It has all cutouts needed for cameras, flash, for laser autofocus, no problem at all. Alright, buy yourself protection, you will thank me later. Alright, it has very gentle haptics. They are not punching in your fingers, but you still can feel it. Very pleasant experience. By the way, we have this cool new feature called Circle to Search. If you tap on this white line and hold, it will bring the Circle to Search feature. We need to connect to the internet so it can work. Thank you, Samsung, for wasting several hours of my life for your Galaxy Unpacked event by talking about features that are Google related that has nothing to do with Samsung phones. So this is pretty cool feature. We can be anywhere in any program, just Hold, circle, and it will search everything online. I can describe this feature as Google Lens on steroids. Very useful, I would like to see this feature in every Android phone. Let's quickly overview the settings. This is almost stock Android experience. Of course, this is global device. It has full support for the Android Auto. Every goodie from Google possible. Battery. We have battery saver. We have reverse wireless charge. Nice sound. Sound and vibration. Live caption. Live caption detects speech on your device and automatically generates captions. How many languages we have? Chinese, French, German, Hindi, Italian, Japanese and beta, and Spanish. Alright, I want to see more languages in this list. <laughs> now playing. Identify songs playing nearby. It downloads database from the internet. Pretty cool, but I feel like I will turn this off for the battery life matter. Vibration and haptics. Touch feedback is very gentle. We have some accessibility options. Not much is going on. Security. Let's use basic pattern. Yes. We have face unlock. We need to move head up and down. Alright. Skip lock screen. Fingerprint. Let's add one. Alright, let's check it. Face not recognized. OK, unlocked. Unlocked. Ah, it's OK. Ah. Fingerprint scanner is OK, but nothing special here. It is passable. Let's go into the system. Oh, it have live translate. Galaxy Unpacked from Galaxy S24 Ultra was just a showcase of the Google's software. <laughs> also, we have some interesting gestures. One head mode, it's pretty basic. I kinda dislike it. It is still pretty hard to reach on the side. Quick tap. We can make it to make a screenshot if you double tap. On the back of the phone, it will make a screenshot. Cool. Display. Dark theme, of course. Lock screen. <laughs> you can add text on it. 
you can customize shortcuts, for example QR code scanner and flashlight. Oh, it is left or right. Let's use left for code scanner and right will be flashlight. What is going on? Alright. Screen saver when charging. Auto rotate screen. It does not rotate, all right. Wallpapers. Themed icons. It is a beta mode. <laughs> 2x2 grid. 5x5 grid. All right. See, it transforms icons into the colors of the wallpaper. We can download, for example, this moon. In wallpapers, there is AI wallpaper, X ray leaf in magenta. Let's create. I need to be logged in. Let's try it. We can press underlined words and change it. For example, X ray flower in magenta. Create wallpaper. It gives you multiple options to choose from. Nice. Minerals. A close-up image of... Let's choose maybe amethyst with neon hues. Press. Hmm? Oh. Not bad. Balloon. A hazy image of... Let's choose Forget Me Notes on backdrop of Black Lake. Mm, not bad. You know, I kinda like this. Very fun. Of course, haters and boycotters of AI will not like it, but I like that this small features and gimmicks makes the operation of our devices slightly better. Of course, we could do this for multiple years already, online and on third-party applications, but I like that it is built into the system, everyone can try it, it is easy to use. Let's try something else, for example, let's try painting, a painting of forest and maybe unicorns in the 19th century realist. Create wallpaper. Oh, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Faces are very distorted, not the best, but kind of fun to play around. Maybe not a unicorn, T-Rex, and let's create wallpaper. <laughs> maybe not a forest, beach, and maybe in the pop art. <laughs> Imaginary a surreal bridge made of silk in the shades of coral and tan. Create wallpaper. Oh, not bad. I can see someone use it. Okay, let's press. We can apply it to home screen, and our buttons will be with the same color, set wallpaper, home and lock screen, and voila, we have changed the mood of our phone. I like it. We have some news. While I'm staying in Russia, it gives me Russian news about Half-Life 3. I think my grand-grandchildren can enjoy Half-Life 3. I like this device in terms of just a normal phone. Operating system is nothing mind-blowing, but still kinda pleasant to use. Smartphone is very nice for the touch, especially without any protection, but I still encourage you to buy any case at all. Use hydrogelic film, I already applied one, so I'm not afraid to actually drop it. So first impressions, a very nice device, pleasant to use, but the only problem I have with this device is price. 
1300 dollars for 256 gigs we are almost in 2025 what is going on google so i like this phone very nice little features for example double tap i can make a screenshot bam screenshot done hold circle to search bam i'm on the internet i can search the results very quick very useful i like it let's quickly overview the camera app this is google camera we have separate buttons for photo and video modes in photo we have action pen what is it i like that you can press this question mark and it will show you what it is very cool mode it blurs everything besides your subject cool long exposure mode you can make nice trails of moving lights and shadow trails of moving objects during daylight i love this portrait mode you only have 1.5 2 no ability to control the amount of bokeh but you can control brightness shadow and white balance in almost all modes by the way you can control shutter speed in automatic mode very nice before this phone i saw this feature only on vivo x100 ultra in street photography mode i don't know about hdr is it preserved when you manually choose your shutter speed we will see night side is night mode we can choose the amount of the exposure and panorama hmm. we have pro mode we can shoot up to 50 frames per second or raw i don't know how to shoot in bursts here maybe it lacks this feature very strange maybe in pro mode my friends if you know how to shoot burst on pixel devices please tell me in the comment section burst mode is when you press and it makes multiple photos for example 20 photos 100 photos am i missing something can't find it right now a video pen what is it all right this is painting stabilization mode blur i think it is portrait video mode with fake background blur fake bokeh basic video mode what we have here only 4k resolution and up to 60 frames per second not impressive in 2024 but okay stabilization standard is just standard stabilization locked is simulation of a tripod and active when you are moving very fast speech enhancement unavailable why speech enhancement works only on 24 or 30 frames per second slow motion 1x and 2x only what we have here 1 8 and 1 fourth. I feel slow motion is pretty basic in this phone. We will test this out. And time lapse. That's pretty much it. We can control the amount of time lapse. Let's see what gallery app can bring us. It has magic eraser. Erase some stuff. For example, this bottle. Oh, pretty cool. <laughs> Let's erase this phone. So, my friends, I feel it is enough for the first impressions. If you know some cool features that I definitely need to check, please let me know in the comment section. Let's quickly test some photos, videos, to get an idea what this phone is capable of. Before we compare it against other flagships, we will test the hell out of these devices. Now let's see some results. Quick update, I already started editing this video and I found one very weird restriction. I can't send application via anything. I just can't send application to another phone. This is just half of the problem. I cannot accept any application from other phones. For example, I wanted to send myself for this Google Pixel device some applications via Bluetooth, but it just refuses to do this. I need to rename application, remove .apk, so smartphone does not recognize that it is application. Also, I have to archive it into the zip file. Only then this Google Pixel device can accept it via Bluetooth. Very strange, what is going on? But this is the first time, besides the Apple devices, that I see this weird behavior with applications. This is Android, what? <laughs> what Google is thinking? Very weird. And to tell the truth, very annoying. All right, my friends, this is photo comparison. Just my first impressions. It will be a very short video. We won't go too deep, as we normally do, to our photo reviews. I just want to get an idea of what this smartphone can do in terms of photo image quality. This is selfie camera. You can shoot this wide or zoom in a little bit. But as you can see, Pixel is very aggressive in terms of processing and sharpening. So very mixed feelings. I don't know, maybe other phones will produce complete garbage in this low light situation. We will see, we will test everything. 
But for now, we can see that lots of sharpening is going on. <laughs> Look at my forehead. I have noticed that Google Pixel 9 Pro XL is actually not bad in night mode and even in some telephoto shots. This is 5x zoom, this is 10x, this sign says walking with dogs is prohibited, I can actually read on both, on 5x and on 10x. Maybe it is not very distinctive, we go so back, запрещен, but some phones will give you complete mushiness inside this. I can even see some signs of bark of this tree. We can see grass, some highlight performance, not bad, not bad. Zoom capabilities are pretty nice. We can go from this ultra wide shot to this 20x zoom. Of course, image is not that great, but we need to understand that this is seen and light smartphone inside your pocket. Very convenient. To understand it more, of course, we need to compare it with other smartphones, such as modern flagships from China, Vivo X100 Ultra, Huawei Pura 70 Ultra, Honor Magic 6 Ultimate, and some other smartphones. I feel like main competitor for this smartphone will be Galaxy S24 Ultra from Samsung and iPhone. Global devices, well known, people love them for some reason. So let's see some examples. Here is Google Pixel 9 Pro XL on your left and Samsung S24 Ultra on your right. The same lightning conditions during the day, telephoto shots. I love to use telephoto models for the portraits. Let's zoom in to see what is going on. After using Samsung S24 Ultra for almost half a year, I noticed that almost every time during the day, and especially in bad lighting conditions indoors, I get this weird uh, yellow-brown and sometimes green tint. Colors are very washed out, and contrast levels are not so impressive. As you can see, Samsung S24 Ultra is pretty soft and not in the good way. Sometimes image is soft like DSLR or mirrorless camera with nice soft lens, but here it is soft because of a lack of details. On the other hand, Pixel is too overprocessed, very oversharpened, but it is not just oversharpening. If you look closely, we can see some highlights on my eyes, we can see veins. Here on Samsung everything is lost. So yeah, of course, Pixel is very oversharpened, but we actually get better details before this oversharpening. That's why image is better. So I'm not a big fan of the Samsung cameras. Google Pixel 9 Pro XL on the left, this is iPhone 13 Pro, unfortunately, this is the only iPhone I have right now. I feel like it is a waste of your money to buy iPhone 14 or 15, so I will definitely compare iPhone 13 Pro with iPhone 16 Pro soon, stay tuned if you want to see this. And on the right we have Sony Xperia 1 Mark 6, the latest flagship from Sony, main sensors. And what we see here, Pixel is somewhat overprocessed, but at the same time feels very organic. While on iPhone, it gives me the same Galaxy S24 Ultra vibes. Look at the skin, we have some weird yellow and green tint. Yeah, of course we have some leaves, but on the iPhone, I get the same yellow, brown and green tint, even inside and without any foliage. By the way, Sony looks very overprocessed too, not in the good way. But I kinda like colors, eye, lips on the Sony. So it is hard to tell, I like Pixel and Sony equally, in the different ways. Unfortunately, we do not have any shot with her on the Galaxy S24 Ultra, but we can use this photo as a reference. We still can get general idea of, of what is going on. And here what I was talking about. Look, brown, green and yellow tints. Here the same on the iPhone. Neither of them give the real skin colors. In reality, yeah, her skin is little bit yellow, but not like this. Not like on Samsung and not like on iPhone. It looks very green, very brown, with very weird funky stuff going on. Not bad, both Pixel and Sony are very overprocessed in terms of sharpening, but we have real details, like color of the eye, some small details inside, here we can see some veins, <laughs> Galaxy and iPhone are just a complete mess. Hmm? So Pixel 9 is actually not that bad in terms of photography. And what happens when we go into the night? Google Pixel on your left, Galaxy S24 Ultra from Samsung, iPhone, sorry, unfortunately 13 Pro right now, and Xperia 1 Mark 6 flagship phone from the Sony from this year. <laughs> and what we see, Google Pixel too overprocessed, in the past I trashed Samsung too much. In situation like this we can see that it is actually not that bad <laughs> compared to others. iPhone, what is going on? Image is just bad and Sony... Poor Sony, why are you letting me down? 
You are making sensors for all the smartphone industry. Why? Why are you doing this to us, Sony fans? <laughs> Choose the worst one. All right, all right. And ironically, I can say that Samsung wins. <laughs> I never thought that I will say that. But Sony tried to preserve some color information. Unfortunately, those sensors are trash for $1,300. All these phones are just overpriced in my opinion. The same situation, telephoto portraits, pixel, Samsung, iPhone and... Uh, Sony. So, as you can see, pixel is the most oversharpened among all these other global devices. Neither of them look good in this situation. Maybe Pixel and Samsung are a little bit better than this already outdated iPhone and this, again, disappointing Xperia phone. I can see that Sony tries to preserve some details, color information, but everything is just drowning in this bad noise performance, low dynamic range, poor Sony. I'm so sorry for all you Sony fans, but again, maybe next year, maybe next year. Telephoto shots at night, Google Pixel, Samsung S24 Ultra, iPhone 13 Pro and Xperia 1 Mark 6. I definitely noticed big improvement on the Pixel, despite weird oversharpening, we actually have more details, hairs, eyelashes, veins inside eyes, and of course contrast and color separation is a lot, a lot better than other phones. Oh, we can see lots of noise, lack of dynamic range. On the Samsung and Sony, iPhone is just very mushy. Nice job, Pixel. Not bad. iPhone fans, I will compare 13 Pro against 16 Pro. Please don't be triggered on the comment section. You will get some love too. Ah, Sony, Sony. You can guess I'm a big Sony fan, but this is atrocious. This is Night Mode, Pixel, Samsung, iPhone 13 and Sony Xperia. Without zooming in, looks like Pixel and iPhone got better shots in terms of brightness, but Pixel colors are somewhat oversaturated and weird. In terms of color, Sony is somewhat closer to reality. But lack of dynamic range and bad shadow performance will give you this weird and unpredictable result. Samsung struggled here, for some reason I don't know why, I made 10 photos, all of them look like this. Samsung is definitely outsider here. Everything goes back and forth. I feel like Samsung is definitely outsider, as well as Sony. iPhone actually holding itself, not in every aspect, not in every situation. But it is iPhone 13 Pro. I am interested to see what iPhone 16 Pro will bring. But price is atrocious for all these devices. And the most stupid part that in 2020 or almost 2025, Pixel and iPhone are still offering you 128 gigs. This is ridiculous. All these phones are overpriced in my opinion. So my friends, this is just first impressions. We won't go too deep. I feel like we need to stop. I made tons, tons of tests. We will make one hour plus in depth for photo, for video against the best of the best flagship phones on the market. I find that Pixel is very aggressive, very overprocessed. Sometimes it can definitely give you nice results, but sometimes you will get a very weird look. Situation like this, against sunlight, you can see that computation is cool and dandy, but you need to bring good hardware for it also, otherwise you can get this funky stuff. So there will be lots of videos, we will compare this phone against everyone, against Vivo, against Oppo, against Huawei, Honor, maybe iPhone if it comes out this month. So my friends, let's see some video examples and make some conclusions. Twenty X is maximum. Two X, ultra wide, five X, one X, ultra wide. One X. Mm. 
You can switch to the selfie camera, by the way. You need to stop recording. And only then you can use selfie camera. Google Pixel 9 Pro XL Fake below Can we spot any artifacts? And the foliage This is main sensor because there is no selfie blur for some reason. Google Pixel, main sensor. Can we spot any quality increase? How oh, is the noise rejection? A little bit of wind also today how is the stabilization is it one thousand three hundred dollars performance please tell me in the comments by the way for 256 gigs of storage Pretty insane. iPhone main sensor. Can we spot any quality increase? Maybe stabilization is noticeably better. Maybe microphones are good because usually Apple put nice quality speakers and microphones inside their devices. Is it $1,300 performance? Please tell me in the comments. By the way, for 256 Google Pixel ultra wide lens. I set everything to 10 bit colors, but phone tells me that actually this codex works only with 8 bit. So it is what it is, but we have stabilization, which is the top priority here. Exposure compensation is minus one. I want to see shadow information. Actually, actually, if we turn off exposure compensation, everything is all right. And now main sensor.
stabilization pretty smooth on my screen right now we will see how it will behave on a large computer screen ultra wide lens main sensor 5x zoom one x telephoto one x ultra wide pixel nine pro excel selfie camera late evening Google Excel main sensor now can we see a boost in the low light performance so maybe there is something special that you want me to test from these devices Please tell me in the comment section, so I can try to implement all this in the next in-depth comparison videos. Feel free to make a suggestion in the comment section, I will look at everything. Maybe if something worries you in terms of video quality in these phones before you want to buy one of them, maybe we can look into this. Anyway, thank you for watching, have a very cosmic day and I hope to see you in the next videos.